Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our final E3 um, for the IBM Foundation for the year of 2020. Um, I want to take just a moment to welcome and say thank you to Ms. Ebony Wilson, our moderator today, and also to Ms. Renee, Renee Pomalis, is that correct? <laughs> hey. um, who are both here to discuss, um, have a panel discussion regarding salary and the, the taboo topic of um, salary discussions. So um, if everyone will um, just give them your attention and at the end, we will open it up to some question answer time. So if you have a question that you would like to ask, Ebony will be monitoring um, the Q&A section down at the bottom. Go on ahead and submit your questions at any time and we are dedicating about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the webinar today so that they can address your questions. So Ms. Ebony, I will go on ahead and turn over um, the Zoomcast to you. Thank you, Amy, I appreciate it. Um, and thank you as always for setting this up. So hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here today and um, taking part in this discussion. So um, for those of you that don't know, my name is Ebony Wilson and I am uh, the Director of Guest Services at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I've been a IABM member for, I think it's three years now. I am the president of the Nevada chapter um, and I'm a, a member of course, region seven. So, hey, region seven, if you're in here. Um, so I don't know about any of you, but um, I've always had challenges with discussions when it comes to salary knowing what to do, what to say, what's appropriate, what's not. Luckily for me, um, one of the first things my mentor told me to do when I started in the business was, she was like, you always wanna have an HR friend. So I would like to introduce to everyone today, my HR friend, um, Renee Pomales. Renee and I started um, at Charlotte Bobcats Arena in 2005 together. And if I had any HR question, didn't matter what it was, whether it was related to me or whether it was related to one of my team members, I was like, Renee, I need help. Give me an answer, please. What am I supposed to do? Um, so since 2005, she has been my personal HR consultant. I can't guarantee that for anybody else, but she's my personal HR consultant. Um, currently, she is a director of operations. She's director of operations with Laz Parking. So she's moved over to the operations side. I guess HR got boring, but she's moved over to, it, it's probably easier. She's moved over to the operations side with us working, um, you know, technically with what would be one of our vendors or our allied members, Laz Parking. So with all of that said, Renee, welcome. Um, I'd like to introduce you to my wonderful IAVM family. They are amazing individuals. Um, and yeah, just if you would start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and your experience in HR. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Renee Pomales, and I came from, she is correct, 2005. I started my journey in, um, with pro sports and uh, venues um, with the Charlotte Bobcats, and that's how me and Ebony became acquainted. Uh, but I've done payroll HR for 18 years. Um, move over, I moved over to the other side um, later in my career, uh, the corporate side, more corporate and then up in the vendor side of it. Um, I like HR, HR has its um, different way of seeing things. Uh, Cause you know, you, you're, you're there for the company and you're also there for the people your employees to make everything a, a little bit easier, go cohesive. But it, it can be time consuming and it can be challenging. Um, every day is different. And so you learn a lot. Uh, in my role as I'm doing now, uh, I thought I was going to get a little way away from HR. No, <laughs> you never get away with HR when you have staff. So every day is different. And especially now dealing with COVID, and more issues and more um, the, uh, the, 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 the relationships you have with your, your staff, um, people having to deal with COVID, having testing with COVID. So HR is, is 
the utmost important at this time. And so if anybody's like me, even though I'm a director of a whole different <laughs> part of it, you still do HR every day. And so my whole life revolves around HR because I'm dealing with people all day long. Yeah, we can't get away from it. Um, so first question I have for you is, why do you believe that the topic of salary and salary negotiations is still such a taboo topic now in 2020? Because if you, you know, it, it, it's like people clam up the moment you start talking about salary or salary negotiations, it's kind of like, Ey. so from your perspective, being in HR so long, why do you see that as a, a as still kind of a taboo topic? Most people are afraid because they think it's going to impact how, their decision making of their employer. Because if you come out the gate asking about money, it, that scares people. They think it scares them off. So they they don't. I've asked uh, several uh, employees, why didn't you bring it up in the beginning, or why haven't you brought it up? because you go through a whole interview and you know, anybody knows if you've been through an interview session, you can interview with four or five people and you wait to the end and say, that's not enough money. I can't do it. And as an HR professional, I wish I would have known ahead of time. But you have the right to come in there and you have the right to ask. I wouldn't ask on the first conversation at all. Get to see if this is a feel for you. But they shouldn't have that taboo, they shouldn't. You should make, uh, any HR person should make um, everybody, the, the candidate, feel comfortable enough to come up and speak to you. Um, I always see everybody as a, a potential friend. So I talk to them like a potential friend. Anybody knows Ebony? Ebony doesn't meet strangers. She never meets strangers. So when you talk to her, you feel comfortable to bring up that point. And that's what I try to. Everybody who talks to us, there's a lot of people who talk to HR and they're afraid just because they got the interview. I'm, I'm never to, afraid to interview because I see, I know me and I know who I am and who can speak better about me than myself. So I go in with confidence and I talk, but I never bring it up on the first. But it's a taboo which we have to erase because money is an issue, especially now in this COVID era. It's an issue because you, you're dealing with a lot of people who are out of work who accept lower pay or they accept uh, benefits, better benefits just to get a job. And that's what I'm running into every day right now. People are just accepting jobs that they are overly qualified for because they just need a job. But when they hear the, what I'm paying, you can see the shock on their face. You see the little shock on their face, but they will accept it because I'm going to make sure if I can't give you the cash that you need, I'm going to make sure maybe benefits will work out for you a little bit or something otherwise. But it shouldn't be a taboo. We should make, HR should make a concerted effort to make feel, people feel at home, comfort. Well, you can talk to me. I'm, my door is open. So it, it shouldn't be, but it is. Okay. So how, how does someone prepare to answer that question because salary again even though from our standpoint or from i should say the standpoint of someone that is applying for a job it's kind of like you don't want to say anything about it but when you are asked the question whether it's through the application process or whether it's when you start actually interviewing how do you suggest someone prepared to answer that question or when should we prepare to answer that question never on the first interview you get in the comfort zone. You're trying to figure out if it's the job for you. Uh, most, uh, like I tell everybody, when we get a, a resume, you got 30 seconds to catch our attention. So now you got our attention. So now I want to talk to you. So I'm going to talk to you. I want to get a, a feel for you. With me, I always look, are you going to mesh with my staff? So I want to talk to you. And if you get to the second one or the third one, that's when you should be asking. That's the time if you want to ask, that's when you should be asking. Um, okay. And then when you're asking, it's like, um, you should go by the, I, wrote, I took a little notes on some things and I'm going to kind of reflect on them too. You should, if somebody says, what is your salary range? 
I never, even when I was in the room for this, I never gave them a blanket because I didn't want to uh, lowball myself or I didn't want to go too high where I, I stepped out of bounds and okay. I kicked myself out by myself. But you could come up with a, like a line that says, like with my experience and qualification, I think they're in line with the position. So that throws it back on HR. Let me tell the HR secrets. <laughs> it throws it back on HR. <laughs> We won't tell. We won't tell. We promise. <laughs> it throws it back on HR to come up with a line. But you also want to go out there and he says, if it's like, if this is a right position for me, I'm sure we can agree on something. So it throws out that I'm willing to negotiate, but you want to give me the money. That you okay. And so it's, it's, it's just, it's kind of like a cat and mouse. You just have to make sure you you are confident in what you're saying and know where you want to be at. Okay. So a, a way of preparing is knowing, essentially knowing what you're looking to make. So Correct. taking into account you your in effect, When you, that's a huge question. But when you, when you apply for something, make sure you check out everything around this position. Uh, the region that you're in, because Vegas is not going to pay what they've been paid. Montana's not going to pay what Vegas been paid. New York, you might be in New York and you're used to some money. You come to where I'm at. I'm in Baton Rouge. You're not going to get that. I can promise you that. You got, I came from Texas. So while part of my negotiation term was I had to make sure that my taxes was covered because in Texas, you don't pay state tax. But in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, you do. So you got to take all that into account when you, you're dealing with that money. What is the house of the, the cost of living? Because cost of living is a big thing, a big thing, because in Texas, it was a little bit higher than it was it is in Baton Rouge. I came from Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a whole lot higher. So research, research, research. Um, and with your pay scale, also go on pay scale. They, they'll, they'll give you some. You can go on salary.com, you can go on uh, Glassdoor. You can look up the, what the rate should be, where you should be in up and down, but also negotiate, you, be ready to negotiate <laughs> because you got to put in there with your experience, even though it says, says it says 50,000, you know that you're worth more. Be willing to negotiate with your company. It might work. It might work out for you. Okay. So when you uh, the the advice you gave us as far as you know, try to um, put the onus back on HR when it comes to salary by kind of deferring from giving a, a salary. Do you think that looks negatively though upon the applicant? No. Because basically you're telling them, hey, I'm willing to, to work with you no matter what it is. Let me know what it is, what y'all are looking for, what you are looking for, and I'm willing to work. And by saying, if the job is right for me, you know, we can negotiate. Basically, that's what you're saying. If it, it might not be everything I want it to be, but with other exceptions, I can, I can make that work. I can make that work. So... In the in this world of, of again salary negotiations, you know you always hear about it, but does it happen as often as we think, or is that a myth? Because it's it, the the mindset is you should always be prepared to negotiate your salary. Do you see that people, or like in your experience, do you see that people always come in prepared to negotiate, or is that kind of a myth? No, that's a myth. They don't come in prepared. They will accept it every once in a while. There, you have that exception that comes in totally prepared. Well, this and this and this and this and this, and and then you you you're ready because you already know, you're already set. I I I've um had several when I say several hundreds of interns and uh, ex employees that uh, former employees that call me, and they're never prepared for <laughs> for that that negotiation. Because negotiation is the key. They expect, HR expects a salary employer for you to come in and count. Okay. It is, we expect it. 
And if it doesn't feel like, well, <laughs> fantastic, I like you even more. <laughs> You're like, great. Let's work out how to do. You just gonna take that? Okay. Exactly. I never. I, I, my brother is um, um, a, a executive in Michelin, and he makes a very high figure, but he doesn't make a decision without calling because he knows on the negotiation side he wants to get the most that he can get, and he doesn't come in there without a plan. And everybody sit down and write down exactly what's the, the least you will take. And if you if that's the least you're gonna take, always counter with something good, <laughs> like vacation and, and benefits and stuff like that. So you can make sure you get what you deserve. Okay, so that kind of that that leads into my next question. So when you're looking at a negotiation, you shouldn't necessarily just be looking at salary. So how often or is it is it expected or does it even work if you come in and you ask for something like, you know, I might need additional vacation time or like what are what are other things outside of, I guess, probably vacation time and salary that you can talk about or ask about as options within a negotiation if if again, the salary isn't exactly what you're looking for. You can ask for a lot of like um, benefits on your insurance because some people have to wait three months to get insurance. You can ask, can, you get, can I get my insurance right away? Day one. People don't think about that. Why wait when you can get it day one? If you can't get the salary you want, say, uh, can I get an extra week of vacation? They'd rather throw out a vacation. Easy. They'll throw that out easy. So it's a lot of things you can, your 401k. Some people make you wait for 401k. You can do a lot sick time, um, um, the, uh, holidays. What, what holidays do you get? Um, can I get an extra day to add to that more personal time? Um, can I get off on weekends, on um, weekdays, every Friday? It's stuff you can negotiate. It, it's just, which company you working with? Can I work from home? That's a big one. Which everybody doing? Can I work from home two days a week? Yeah, it's you have to know what you want. Come prepared, research, make sure it matches up. Because you're not with this this uh, coronavirus out here. You got uh, grandma, grandpa, mama, cousins are applying for the same jobs and they got masters master's degree and it's basically a high school diploma job because they just need a job and they will accept they'll accept the money so you gotta you gotta come in with you might not be cash but can i get an extra vacation day an extra vacation week i negotiated with mine and i got an extra week it didn't do me no good because I'm gonna lose it anyway because I did take it. <laughs> I negotiated it. Um, <laughs> but if you go in strong and if you throw out five, I bet you walk away with the real thing. Okay. So in in the instance that, you know, again, usually salary is not is not there and neither is the questions q a is blowing up right now um so if compensation is not listed and neither fully are the benefits so when that when that conversation comes up it is okay to say can you give me a little more detail on the other benefits that are available yes you can ask that and then throw out there can i work two days from home it, it's up to you. You have to, we're not, as an HR professional, we're going to give you what's on our sheet. We know what we accept because we're going to take it back and say, hey, she wants two days, two work days work at home. Guess what? If it's not a big deal, you'll get it. If they really want you, they'll get, they'll give it to you. But you need to be prepared. Look and see what this job offers. When they, when it asks for detail, make sure you know the details of the job. If you have to be in the office and the way you're going to be in the office, you know they're not going to offer you two days. Right. Okay. Be prepared and then know and know exactly what you're in for. Each, each uh, 
company is different. They might offer a little bit of something, this and that. Um, I know um, a company that, that parks in one of our garages, they don't give the day after Thanksgiving. That was a big thing. <laughs> Negotiated. Okay. Which that means you have to look at their days off. You ask, what are your days off? What is your holiday? You have to ask for that so you can match it up. Like here in Baton Rouge, they get a week off for Mardi Gras. Wait, you don't even have to ask for it off? They just give it no, to you off? No, it's, it's a holiday. Okay. All holiday right. Week. Holiday week. The whole week? The school is out, everything. They shut down. Oh. oh okay. See, oh. we got to ask about those things. I'm going to... I'm going to jump into questions because, um, I mean, I know I have a list, but people are asking them. So I, I want to go ahead and get these out here. So yeah. Joyce, hey, Joyce, um, she asked the question, do you believe it's appropriate for employees to share salary information across the company? And if not, why is it considered a taboo? Um, it, it's been a taboo because uh, I'm not saying nothing that ain't known, that it ain't equal. It is not equal. And so most companies make you keep keep it quiet. I signed a confidentiality form that I won't pay what I make. So it and most companies are, are heading that direction. Because it's not it, it's not even across the board. A lot of it deals with merit. Um, I think a lot of the companies are coming trying to they're getting better uh, with female versus male. Uh, we, we're trying, we're growing. My company is very, very, very good about it. They're doing their best. It's going to be a slow journey, but we'll get there. We'll get there, but it is a, a whole lot better than where I've been before. Um, it's So outside of, so if you don't sign a confidentiality agreement, mm -hmm. what? What suggestions or what parameters would you put around having a discussion with someone else about salary? I mean, I know that I've had conversations with other friends in the industry and we all divulged our salaries to each other. But um, I would what, never tell my salary. I'm sorry. You, you said you would never tell your salary? Not, not exact, not the full amount. Not the full amount. Okay. No, I'll, I'll give you a range. You'll give a range. I give but a range. if you're someone that's, if you're someone, would you suggest someone put like if they feel like they're comfortable with providing with their salary? Why? Why are you you telling everybody? Is it what's the reason behind it? it kind of just to understand what it looks like across the gamut. I mean, the individuals that I shared with, um, they live in different states, and their positions, their their companies kind of varied. Some of them worked for um, city organizations. Some of them worked for state organizations. So it was interesting to me to learn because I was like, oh wait, essentially you're almost at the same level I'm at or you're at the same level I'm at, but you're not making as much. And again, I'm sure some of that has to do with region, some of that, but I, I didn't even, I didn't even think that. So, yeah. I mean, I guess in, in response to research, that that would kind of be. Well, that's where that's where you got um, Payscale and, and Glassdoor because they'll give you a, 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 a average range. Um, it might oh, some people get merit raises, so they jump up a little bit more than others. Um, all it does is start. Sometimes it will start. Say you and another girl are doing the, uh, in the same position or male in the same position and you get more than him. But yours came from a job that you did well well done. It's a merit. It's a merit raise and you get more than him. That starts a conversation. Now he wants to know why she gets this much and I don't. Keep it's your better. mouth closed. Keep your mouth closed. Okay. Um is it possible that when a company has a I don't know what a PRR is you know what that is? A PRR, I'm assuming it sounds like confidentiality, against sharing salary information. 
that this is a way to show disparities with regards to diversity and equity. So I guess the question is the reason is the reason why they don't want people sharing dealing with diversity, dealing with the fact that it would show the disparities between diversity and equity within the company. I, I can't speak for all companies, but it could be. But I can tell you what, as a as humans, sometimes we can be petty. And because somebody makes a few dollars more than you do, that that's sends up red flags, I got to fight everybody in, in the company. Bad attitude, everything. We, they complain about it. Why is she making it? Believe it or not, they will come to HR, shut that door and say, I know Ebony makes $10,000 more than me. And I came in before her. I came way before her. Why is she making that much money? So they try to keep it quiet. Um, they also want to keep it quiet. Because they, basically, they don't want you leaving and telling everybody what you make. So the company, they might be paying you way lower than that company would pay, and the company knows. And so they would try to steal you too. I personally have been offered, um, with this position, I've been offered for another company. But they just, they, they heard a director, how much that director makes. But me and that director don't make the same. Mm. So when they came to me with, with that that director, they offered me what that director made. I made more than that director. So that offer was too low for me anyway. Got it. Misinformation. Okay. Um someone uh asked, this was anonymous, what resources could you offer a person to find appropriate information on proper going rate of pay to make sure they're asking for valued salary range for their position? So pay we did scale, talk about a couple options. Payscale.com, pay payscale.com, uh, salary.com. It's a bunch of, believe it or not, it's a uh, glass door. Glass door is good. LinkedIn has a uh, thing. They all run across the gamut. And everybody knows, with LinkedIn, everybody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who can give you. Well, they're probably in this range. Um, when I talk to my people, I pull up. Uh, some information. When people call me and ask, where should I ask? Where should I be at? Always research a little bit. And then I call people I know in that area. If I know somebody in the area, where should she be? Or where should he be? And I give that information back. Um, like Ebony said, always have a good HR friend. That Make an HR friend. friend. It will uh, you get a lot of your search because that person going to pick up the phone and say, hey, you need to be here. Um, and the other thing that I would say um, as a IAVM member um, and Gina or Amy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but they do a salary survey every year. And if you complete that survey with your own information, if you complete that with your own information, they will send you a copy of it once it's completed. So therefore that year, you essentially would have an understanding of what salaries look like in our industry. So, um, and that's what I said, Amy, Gina, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that goes out every year. And I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. I know that I have completed it at least once um, and you can receive that. So um, Amy, yeah, Amy. We do try to do that annually. Um, Gina, I'm not um, as certain as you would be. I've been with the association for just three years. Um, I do know that it did go out earlier in the spring and there was a synopsis of the survey results in BP Magazine than FM Magazine. Um, I will post in the um, comments section to everyone the link to be able to go in and find those surveys. Thank you, Amy. Rip, I don't know if you can put it in the chat, but you, you've you been a, a member longer uh, than myself. You you may know if that comes out reg regularly or not. Um, the next question is- Ebony, Ebony, also, let me, re I, I just remember, when you're negotiating, you asked about uh, benefits and uh, vacation, what else you can do, your bonus. Bonuses, yes. Because I didn't, 
I didn't realize everybody didn't offer a bonus because most of the companies that I've worked with have offered a bonus. So yeah. when I went to one and they were like, no, we don't do a bonus. I was like, hmm? You can, you can uh, negotiate the percentage. Oh, okay, negotiate the percentage of your bonus. Um, so the next question is, can we get some guidance, um, on negotiating a salary increase during performance interviews rather than just during the job interview? Thank you, Bridget. So mm -hmm. is, do you have any suggestions of once you're employed with the company and you're going through your performance review, if, um, if there is an increase involved, is there a way or do you have tips for negotiating that during a performance review? Um, usually the, they already know what they're going to offer you through the year. They keep it, they should, they should do a, um, a mid-year performance. So they already kind of in the end of the year, they already know what they're going to offer you, uh, what you're going to be at, unless you do something extraordinary. Um, you can ask, but 10 to 1, they already said, they already said because it also fills in with that budget. So is that something you should look at in advance? So like, say for this year, of course, um, I, I didn't I didn't think about negotiating that. But let's say I go into my review this year and I say, look, I know our standard is, you know, 2% or 3%. For next year, is it possible that I can get a larger increase? And if so, what would I need to do to attain that? Is Can you do it you in that? You can say it like that. You can say it like that. But always try to, be, at the beginning, that, that's something that you need. What is the, what the increase is? That's something that you get, that needs to, if if I hit all my goals, what what's the, my increase standard? Because some people will, I know companies that will throw 3% and you and hit every goal and, and ex exceed it expectation you're still getting the three percent so so even in a so even in the interview process it's okay to say you know i understand this may be the starting salary can you tell me about increases or how increases work my example yeah how increases work my example is myself when i uh, took over this position the the bonus was five percent i increased it i in, uh, negotiated to ten percent in the first year I know what I'm worth and I know what I can bring to the table and what I can do. And so, and so, that's, that's so you stated that during the process at the, when we, when I got the offer and I saw what the bonus scenario was, didn't like it. Would that would have stopped me from taking the position? No, cause I know I wouldn't get there, but I did bring it up and I got it changed. And so, if you are consistent and your your work shows it, yeah, if they only giving you three percent, let's talk about how can I increase this. I need I, we need to talk about I am consistent. I bring the numbers up. I always have it. it, it um, um, I exceed my uh, expectations, so I need let's negotiate this. If, people will tell you no. I'm telling you, they will tell you no. But you have to live like I do. I, I live as no is a negotiation term. I don't accept no. We can talk about it later. But we're going to talk about it. And then I'm going to bring to the table. I'm going to bring you a list. Bring what you've done. Bring to the table. This is what I've done. I increased business this much. I brought this to the table. I brought new people in. We have a, a, a turn, turn, turnover rate is lower than it's ever been. Uh, quality. You can show surveys what this. You can show your work. Show your work. They usually will talk to you. Probably you won't even have to show it because they're going to give it to you because they know that you're worth it. Okay. Um, so uh, someone put in, um, what about other benefits besides salary? What about transportation or car allowance as a request? Or phone? I know that's if, you know, if you want to use your own phone versus receiving a company phone, or if you're expected to use your own cell phone, can you ask for an allowance for things like your car or your cell phone or anything else like that? You can. Um, my phone paid pay for. 
So that's something that I ask. If you're going to call me on my cell phone and you're going to, I need compensation for that. I did ask for that. Uh, my company uh, also offered you phone. I'm not walking around with two phones. And so that was my issue. So I said, I can't walk around with two phones. And by the, t uh, by the time, because I didn't negotiate this in the interview, when I started working, that's when they said, okay, we're going to, um, we need to call you. So now everybody's calling my cell phone. They got my private number. So it was too late to switch over. So they decided just to pay out my phone, but you can negotiate. Uh, cars are a little bit harder. Uh, you got most of them is the executives have that. Or if you are a salesman or a traveling auditor, it's easier to, to get that. Um, a lot of people are trying to get away from paying um, for somebody's car. That's it's cheaper. I think it's cheaper, cheaper to buy a car and give it to you than to drive the company car. Okay. Um, Cynthia asked, make a good HR friend in your organization or externally? Uh, me and Ebony met at work. And made it no secret that we, we talked a lot. Made it no secret. Um, some people might not like it. Now, I did have uh, a hard time with a couple of people that the upper uh, management did not like. And so it made it tough on me. And so um, you might want to, you can find it, if, wherever you can find a good one that supports you and know what you're looking for, you shouldn't have a problem. Um, you might have to take that relationship that's at work and have it outside of work and keep it, or keep it professional at work. Keep it very professional at work and, and then let let her know or him know that you, you, you don't want to have that conversation. Don't get it missed. <laughs> All HR people hang out with each other. We talk, we kind of find out what we can do better, how we can we, we, we go to Sherm, we talk. So we know what you're looking for. So we'll reach out to each other. And so that person can be your wealth of knowledge. Um, but know that that person is, is, is looking out for you as an employee, but also as an employer when they're at work. At, at, after work, they're going to tell you, they're not going to tell you any details about work, but they'll give you good advice outside. Good advice. If you're having problems with your boss and so forth, uh, she'll give you, if you don't know what to do, she'll give you advice. She'll give you advice in the office. She'll give you advice in the office, but you always should have a good, a good, good friend that'll be honest with you and tell you the truth. <laughs> They won't give you the standard line. They'll tell you the truth. You need to back off. I said that before. You need to back off. We're not going to win that battle. Go for the win the war, not the battle. She has told me that before. <laughs> back off. <laughs> Let it go. It ain't worth it. If you want to ask me, I'll ask her, but you guys can't have her. She's mine. Um, another question we received in the chat. When filling out an application online and the desired salary is a requirement, requirement in order to proceed and you have to put in an actual figure, what do you suggest? If it's not a range and they're asking for an actual figure, what do you suggest? Sometimes that can be a little tough because you're going to actually have to put what you want, but just know I'm telling all trade secrets. And I've told Ed this before, most of the companies will, they already know what the range they're going to be in. So if you do your research and know that this company probably is going to pay you about between 60 and 70, say that. Make sure you're in between so you can, when you counteract them and negotiate, you can go up or go down. So put yourself in the middle. I've told them this before. Make sure you're in the middle because usually they'll be 5000 They'll go up 5000 oh, 5000 that's, that's nothing. We'll go up 5000 We'll meet that. But we're not going to meet 10, 15, and then give you extra holidays and all this stuff, unless you're an exec. They'll work out. They give execs a little bit more room because they're going to do a lot of work. They're going to do a lot of work. But know, know where you want to be, and you can put it in because you need to know exactly what's going to cost you to live in that area. 
What's the cost of living? They don't want to know your personal business. They just want to know what is it going to take to get you there. They don't want to hear, oh, I got to pay bills. I got to, I got to pay for this. They don't want to know that. They just want to know where you need to be. And so if, if, if they know in their mind they're going to pay 70 and you say 65, they're happy because they know there's some negotiation room. And if you don't negotiate, they're going to take you at 65. Even though they know they will take you at 70, they'll pay you 70. They're going to take you at 65 and you take 65. So go in and negotiate. And I will tell you, I think it's um, Paycheck City. If you go to Paycheck City, they will actually break out a salary based on the state that you live in and what you would declare for your taxes. I've done that for a few places um, to, so that you can find out what your check would look like biweekly or weekly or however, depending on that company, however they pay. So I would use that suggestion, even if it's a situation where you're looking for an increase at your current job, you know, you want to know how big of a difference is that $5,000 versus $3,000 versus $10,000. So um, Paycheck City. Um, they if, will... they, if you get a job and they tell you, we're going to give you a raise for $1,000, that's take that, that $1,000 divided by 2,080. That's how much you get getting extra each, each hour. Okay. Here we go. Um, next question we just got. Um, this one's anonymous. Have you seen salary discrepancies in regards to race? I'm thinking back. Not as much. No, no, not, not where I. This new this company that I'm at right now is very very diverse and they're pretty much good and I don't get to see everybody and I'll pay everybody according to their the skill level qualification skill I don't care if you uh, white black green purple uh, grow wings grow horns I don't care I, I just need somebody to do the job in the past I had but it, it's been years and years ago I saw back when I was in the the corporate world where um, the males got a lot more than the females and they did the exact same job. So it was more so gender than not really race. Um, was it? it was both, but it was more prevalent with the female and male. Okay. So but more prevalent in gender than it was in race. You knew exactly exactly what they were going to That was when I, when I used to do my payroll days, because I used to go, what's this? <laughs> Why? I used to get upset. Why? Why? And you couldn't get an honest answer. And I knew what the answer was. Okay. And so um, got myself together and went back to that job because I did not want to be involved with a company that uh, that discriminated because of gender. So if they're doing the gender, you know they were doing it on um, race also. They didn't care. They put it out there. And so um, this the company I'm I I think my company is pretty good. Everybody has a little bit that falls back, but my problem is seeing more of us at the table, females at the table, uh, seeing more uh, women and men of color at the table more. Um, I think we as we're getting better. I think um, knowledge, being aware, is getting better. And I think also that we refuse to be silent anymore and accept. Once you accept, you are, you're, you, you are probably part of the problem because that's why it's the way it is. Don't accept. If you, you know that it's wrong, say something. Now, can you deal with the consequences? My company, if you you bring attention to it, they want to know about it. They definitely want to know about it. And there's no repercussion. But they, they are, I have a, a great company. Don't get me wrong, they, there's days where um, I'm already, I already packed my bags and out the door, but it's not because they're not trying. They're trying. And that's all you can ask. It's change takes time, 
change is hard for some people. And it, it, we're coming from a, a, a generation that had the good old boy mentality. And it's going away. It's going away slowly. It's slowly. This next generation will not stand for it. And um, that's what we, uh, we have to beat that drum louder. Um, let's change. Change is good. And again, for for those that, that didn't hear in the beginning, one of the things that Renee did say is that the majority of people do not negotiate their salaries when they come in. The majority of people come in and they take whatever salary is given to them. So, you know, that research in the beginning is really important and, and knowing what you want. And a lot of conversations um, within your career trajectory have to do with knowing what it is that you want. So know what you want, know what you need, um, and then be prepared when you're going into uh, these, these opportunities, whether it's with a new organization or whether it's with your current organization. Um, someone asked, and this is a good one, how do you balance negotiating a competitive salary up front but also wanting moving cost assistance. Now, that is becoming less common as far as moving expenses. Uh, people don't like to pay it. Some people don't like to pay it. But they will if, if you're worth it. Um, um, if they find a diamond in the rough, they'll spend it. Not, uh, so I would, um, I would throw it out there. When they tell you about the salary, I would throw it out there right there. Do I get moving expenses? I got a whole house. I did that. Because I knew I wasn't going to move if they didn't pay for it. So, so do you think that you have to then not, not negotiate your actual salary if you're asking for moving costs? Do you need to take that into consideration? Why should you negotiate your salary when they want you to come out there that shouldn't be a part of your salary that should be extra that's benefits you okay. want to come out there. my skills my qualification is what you want that's what i'm selling you so you want me to move across the country you need to pay for me to move across the country that costs extra yeah. that costs extra. The extra my daughter is a reporter um she does camera work, work and she lives in uh, south carolina and then she moved to texas with me and she uh, now it's in Albuquerque, and they wanted to come to Albuquerque. It's going to cost you. And she, we negotiated where she got what she needed so she can move into her apartment. So we're not asking for a lot. We just need help getting to where we're going. And most companies will give you money. If they're not going to go extravagant. You can, don't think. I remember in the NBA, the average for a, uh, a coach to move was like 25000 then I get twenty five thousand. The average is more like five to ten. Okay, so five to ten. Five that's to ten. If, that's if you a long distance. They go now. They get really strict where the long distance. And little secret, little secret. When you're negotiating, you're moving. Tell them to gross it up, because if you don't gross it up, you're gonna pay taxes on it. Oh, okay. So make sure we tell them to gross up that moving costs. Because if they tell you they're going to give you 5000 to move, guess what? They're going to tax that 5000 But if you tell them to gross it up, you're actually going to get 5000 Okay. They pay the taxes, not you. I like it. I like it. Um, so we're, we've got about eight minutes left. So I've got my last question. Um, how does, actually I have two questions, one for me and one for the anonymous person that asked. Um, how does the negotiation strategy change when it's an internal promotion conversation? So if we're, if you're switching jobs internally and there's an offer, does that change the negotiation strategy? It just, it, it changes because you can't say, can I get my benefits early? So it's, it's all about semantics, whatever, um, whatever you want with this with this position do i get an extra week of vacation does that come with it you can say that if i take this position because it's more uh, um, uh, duties more responsibility can i get an extra week on that uh, this is the this is the um the salary and it's not going to go any further 
can I add something else on to it? So can I work from home too bad? So aside, so aside from the fact that you can't really ask for updated benefits, it doesn't really change the strategy for negotiation. It still comes down to research. Like, yeah, unless you are um, moving states, like if you move state, if this position is a promotion and you have to move state, you can ask for things like an apartment for six months, pay for that. So okay. it's things you can, you can work it out. Um, you just got to do your research because they already know what they're going to pay you. That's if, and you don't have to accept it. But um, you can throw it out there. They might not give it to you, but it's worth the conversation. Like I told you, negotiation. No is a negotiation term. Know what you want, what you will accept. Throw out as much as you can. They're going to grab a, call, a, a hold of some of it. They're going to hold on to some of it. Okay. Um, and last question I have, because I know a couple of people have, um, you know, asked me this. Being that we are in a in the time of COVID, um, and particularly for us in our industry, there have been organizations that have done pay cuts, and so you may get hired at some get hired somewhere, but you may not get. Like, how do you ask that question? Am I receiving a full salary or am I receiving re a reduced salary? Is that is that a question you can ask? And if you're told you're receiving a reduced salary, can you ask more questions as far as is that it will that change? When that change is is there a time frame? Like, how does how does that work? This is new for all of us. I ain't gonna much lie about it. It's it's new for all of us. Um, I've never had to say this is a reduced salary. Never heard of saying a reduced salary. This is the salary that we can offer you at this time. What you can do is say, what can I do to get to this rate? Where can I do, how long will it take me to get my salary back up? If I do this, if I do this, this, and this, can my salary go, can I get an increase? When can I expect my increase? you ask those questions before you go in because you're taking a salary cut. But you knew you were taking a salary cut when you saw what the uh, position was because they're going to 10 to 1, they're going to do that flat line saying, how much money do you need to make? What is the salary you need to make? And then you, when you put that, they're going to know. And so you're either going to accept it or not because people are hurting. Companies are hurting um, unless you work for Amazon. They, they live in a dream, but um, you, they already, you already know if you're applying for a job that's lower than what you were making before, you know it's reduced. They're not going to tell you. They, you already know. So let's pass that point and ask, what can we do to get back? When can I expect an increase? If I bring uh, uh, increased sales or, or so forth, can I expect this? What about my bonus? So if, if I'm taking a cut and pay now, or it's a more than what I expected, and I'm going to get a 5% bonus, can I get a 10% bonus instead? If I, if I bring money in, can I show you my work and you give it back to me in my bonus? Thank you. Thank you. And one last question. If you had to give one piece of advice, to someone going in, preparing to um, interview for a job and possibly accept job offers, what advice would you give them? Be prepared, search where you're gonna be, what's the tax rate, um, look for if it's a, 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 in, a, in a city that has a lower um, cost of living because I'm, I'm get, I have a lot of college students that graduate from college and it because they have a bachelor's degree, they think they're supposed to come out making sixty thousand dollars. Not gonna happen. But go in there with confidence. You have to go in there with confidence. Only you know what you can bring to the table. And you selling it. You gotta sell yourself. Be confident, be prepared, know exactly, be prepared for every question. I go in there smiling. Like I said, I take no no is people will take it as a, a derogatory term. I know, 
It's just a reason for me to negotiate. Or down the line, say, remember when you told me no? I did it. I'm going to show you what I can. I, my mom always used to say, I can show you better than I can tell you. Prove it. Be ready. Because they're going to expect you to prove it. And you got to outshine everybody else. And so if you prepare, have your questions ready, um, have your uh, documentation ready, know what you want. I'd rather have somebody like that than somebody who who stumbles or um, waits to the last minute to say, well, I can't accept that. And I you inter interviewed with six people. And then you get here and you tell me, I give you the offer letter and say, I can't accept that. You wasted all our time. All of them. So don't waste my time. Come in prepared. So be prepared and know what you're willing to accept and what you're not. And that means search everything. If you look at the don't go on to a nonprofit. Nonprofit comes totally different from corporate world. Know that man, it's going to change. If the money drops off like now, guess what? They let you go and nobody gets unemployed because nonprofits don't pay for unemployment. So you're not going to get unemployed yet if you don't get unemployment check. So oh, wow. know these things before you apply for these jobs. Okay. Well, thank you, Renee. I appreciate this. this was great advice. Again, everybody, I think the the important thing to to really take out of this, like Renee said, is is research. Um, you know, you really need to be prepared going into these situations and be able to sell yourself. So make sure that you're taking your time to do the research in your area. And like I said, you need to get you need to have an HR friend. You can't have mine. Get your own. I'm available. I talk to anybody. If you need any help, I'm here. <laughs> Everybody says no, but <laughs> all right. Um, I would just want to take a moment um, to thank you, Mr. Renee, for all of your wonderful advice today. Um, I think this is going to be something that going forward even um, from individuals who were not able to attend our webinar today, that there's a lot that they can learn from it. And Ebony, thank you so much for doing such a wonderful job in guiding and moderating and offering your own um, words of wisdom. And um, Gina just um, posted in um, comments for anyone who wants to know, um, we have a new compensation report that will be coming out at the first part of next year. Um, those are done biannually, it appears, Ebony. Sorry about um, me misinforming everyone on that. Um, and it will be in regards to um, the year of 2020's compensation data. So be on the lookout for that. And if you guys have any questions in regards to the compensation report, please feel free to reach out to Kay Young Kim. She is our research manager, and um, she would be happy to help out with any questions that you have. Again, Ms. Renee, Ms. Ebony, thank you both so very much for the wonderful discussion today. We really appreciate you both. And um, thanks to everyone who attended. Um, we'll be sending out some more information after the first of the year in regards to the next um, IVM Foundation E3s. Everyone have a wonderful day.